Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His aid, and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evils of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone, who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Dear viewers, I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of your show, For the Sake of Allah. Today we are dealing with a very important characteristic that may bring destruction to that beautiful bond of brotherhood. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us against that in the Quran. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa warned us against it in the Sunnah and through his conduct. And even naturally, through the natural disposition and people through reason, people know that this thing destroys any relationship no matter how strong it is. We are dealing today with a disease, with a tumor that might destroy the bond of brotherhood, the divine bond that Allah has given us as a gift from Himself. As we know that the kind of brotherhood that is existent amongst the Muslims and between one another, it doesn't exist anywhere else because it is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to them on account of their Iman. Now today we have our brothers, Brother Muhammad and Brother Abdul Rahman, and inshallah we will discuss the issue and talk about it in detail and see how this illness or this tumor, selfishness, how it destroys brotherhood so that we can avoid it and understand its harms and keep away from that. Now, brothers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We know that selfishness is something that is deep in the soul of human beings. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about human beings, وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ إِلَى شَدِيدٍ Man, in his love for wealth, is very severe in that. Why? Because man loves his own benefit. It's all about being self-centered. It's natural. Allah created human beings with that tendency to seek their own benefit. And the child, once he's born, he always seeks to have the milk and the food because had it not been for this inclination or this disposition, man would die. So in some instances or at some stages of life, as long as it is kept moderate and within the limits, it is okay. It is necessary for survival. We need it because man always seeks his own benefit. It's a gift from Allah, but if we abuse it and if we exceed the limit in that, then it is definitely going to destroy our bond of brotherhood, the relationships we have with others. And we can see that a lot of the enmity that happens, it emanates in the first place from selfishness. Selfishness. And anyone, since we were young in school and dealing with our colleagues and all that, the one who had selfishness, who was self-centered, people would turn away from him. And we consider this to be an insult or something that or calling people names when you say, oh, selfish, he's selfish. No one want, wants to be called selfish. So now let's see how this can affect the brotherhood and maybe destroy it. And we all have experiences where we met people and selfishness really destroyed that kind of beautiful relationship we had. I would like you to start with your contributions to this subject because no one in, lives in this world except that he had an experience with selfishness and we must have suffered from that. Of Maybe course. I hope none of us was selfish. But selfish person? No, no. Any relationship between two people has to be based upon certain things. Yeah. I mean, how can you build a relationship with someone? A caring and giving. Very good. Yeah. So you have to give Very something. Yeah. You have to give something from yourself. Very yeah. good. You have to give something from yourself. So it is about giving and taking. Yeah. Giving it and is. taking. It is something mutual. It, it can't be uh, one-sided. You can't say, okay, I have a good relationship with this brother. And uh, all the time you're giving him, you're sacrificing and you're compromising and he takes all, everything from you and doesn't give you anything back. It doesn't make sense. Sure, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. It does. no. So it's based upon any relation, it's based upon rights, rights and obligations. obligations yeah. exactly. There is a balance, there's a state of balance. Yeah. If the balance is broken, that's it, it's over. This is what selfishness does. It comes to the core of the relationship. 
it breaks that balance. Well, I remember a yes. certain incident a long time ago. I had a brother, alhamdulillah, and he uh, had a little uh, booklet of Azkar, yeah. and he uh, liked it. And I, I really liked this booklet. It was uh, like a small, uh, small in size and handy and things like that, and uh, uh, good Azkar. So I gave it to him that day, and uh, till now, he uh, when we when we meet we don't meet we don't meet meet often now. Uh, he tells me about this booklet, and this brings happiness to me. And yeah, it's, it's it's something that very small, but still, I gave it away, and I liked it. And he's benefiting of it. Yeah. And he, he's giving me inshallah a credit, uh, inshallah to be accepted. Uh, uh, by so. Uh, the secret to that, that was a very good thing that we can elaborate more on. You know, people think, or people are naturally inclined to think that happiness in getting more. The more you get, the more or the happier you become. Yeah. Mm. People have this kind of understanding and people have no doubt, about, they have certainty about it. But actually, they are saying, to, uh, you know, researchers in psychology, they have come to the conclusion, although this is known, came to know about now, especially people in psychology, they say that happiness is in giving. When you give people, you tend to be more happy or happier. Uh, and you can experience that yourself. If you see a poor person and he's in need, go and give him a gift. When you see how happy he is and that you have brought happiness to this sad heart, to this sad person, mm -hmm. you will feel extremely happy. You will be overwhelmed with the happiness that you have in your heart. Yeah, when you do happiness. something good, you feel happiness. And Allah knows that. Because He created us and He directed us to this. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He made clear the importance of being uh, away or not to have this kind of selfishness, not being self-centered. When He said, and we all know the hadith, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه من الخير No one of you will truly believe until he loves for his brother the good things that he loved for himself. Subhanallah. The good things he loved for himself. So this is the attitude of the Muslim. It means that if you have true Iman, this will be your natural reaction. You will love for your brother the good things you love for yourself. So this is what Iman necessitates and entails. When you have Iman, it becomes natural. If a person is selfish, what does it indicate? Okay, there is something with his Iman. There is something that he hasn't really perfected his Iman. And um, well, we can see that clear in the life of the Prophet Can you Sallallahu remind us of any things that happened between the companions at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu How they had no selfishness at all? Yeah. Uh, how they, and how this strengthened this relationship, the brotherhood they had, and how it helped create a better society? Incidents uh, when the Al-Muhajirun uh, went to al Medina and met them and, and started to, to give them like sharing the house. MashaAllah. He split the house in two, giving them the Muhajirin apart and the, the Ansar apart. And also uh, it's like uh, giving the, the, the money. So that presents a very good base for... MashaAllah. Not being selfish. Yeah, yani, subhanallah. Uh, you see how Iman creates a better generation. Those people, now the Muhajirun as you stated, they left all their wealth in Mecca. And they came to Al-Ansar, to the people of Medina. Now, as Muhammad told us, that the Al-Ansar, they were, many of them, they were rich. They split their money. They made it into two halves. And the Prophet ﷺ made Al-Mu'akha, Al-Mu'akha, this kind of brotherhood. And we will never, ever come across a brotherhood of that level. It is unsurpassed, unwitnessed, unknown about, unheard of example of brotherhood. They demonstrated their Iman and their love actually in their life in a tangible way. That I have, I have money, I'm from Al-Ansar. The brother came to me from Mecca. Prophet ﷺ made the Mu'akha, this brotherhood between me and him. Now what happened? They split their money and I give him half of it. Who would do that today? Who would do that? And I'm, I doubt that. Bless this nation. So this is a beautiful value. We'll elaborate more on that, inshallah. We'll try to drag lessons from this beautiful attitude, this beautiful characteristic, and inshallah, see how we can implement it in our sure. lives. So I say, inshallah, we'll 
will elaborate more in a few minutes and I'll say to, my, to our viewers, stay with us, we will meet shortly inshallah. The Prophet ﷺ is warning the Muslims, do not go and start praising me and over praise me in the same way the Christians praise the Son of Mary. The last words that will come from our mouths is the kalima. Words that cause hearts to tremble and emotion to overflow. Watch Salim Al Amri speak on being human tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2 a.m. India on Peace TV. He faces... My question is... My question is... I have two questions. He listens... My question is about the beard. About Imam Mahdi. What are the people believing? He answers... So number one is the help of Allah. He satisfies in the light of glorious Quran and authentic Hadith. If Allah helps you, believe me, you have to get success. Catch Dr. Zakir. Then we have the next call, please. To get convincing and valid answers in Dial Dr. Zakir every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Explore the options, match the qualities, assure the success. What happens at school, or more specifically, what happens inside the classroom? The classroom. The classroom. Good qualities of classrooms. Interactive, challenging, collaborative. Distributive focus, student-centered. Let's together examine the quality of education that is provided to our children. To judge this quality precisely, join me on Peace TV. Join Dr. Mandu Muhammad in Teaching at School, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Now we have come to see how selfishness is very likely or has the potential to destroy any strong relationship. And it is the enemy of brotherhood that is in Al Islam. And we managed to see how the Prophet وسلم, directed us to avoid that and to love for our brothers and our sisters the good things that we love for ourselves. Now, how Throughout the daily life, day-to-day -day life, we come across situations. Have you come across something or some situation that helps you understand how evil selfishness is and how it's opposite to be generous towards the people, mm -hmm. how it might help improve that relationship and strengthen it? For example, brotherhood, maybe among the brothers, a brother was in need, something like that. Abdul Rahman, you have something? Once... Uh uh we didn't have the like uh, we didn't have that much food to share mm -hmm. there was a brother he was so selfish so i was eating it and yeah and making noises like he, that that he really is enjoying it yeah. and he didn't even share so that made me feel how selfishness could be uh -huh. yeah okay. when, I'm, when i'm a victim of it okay do you feel that this affected the relationship between you and him actually I mean, not really, because uh, days passed and I forgot. And alhamdulillah, it's a blessing that us as humans, we forget. Alhamdulillah. But uh, yeah. You know what happens with selfishness, the problem with selfishness, that it's not, sometimes it is, it becomes manifest in the minor issues, small things. But the problem with selfishness is that it grows. And sometimes it might become a life-death 
choice. So some people, they choose to sacrifice the benefit or the interest of their brothers for the sake of them uh, getting something small. Sometimes, for example, we can see how this happened in one battle from the companions. May Allah be pleased with them. That one day during the battle, three of them were wounded. So one had water and he wanted to give, you know, when the person is wounded, he needs water because he loses blood. So another companion came and he saw, saw one of them who was asking for water and he was severely wounded. So now there was another one. Now the companion heard this one asking for water. He came to him and he wanted to give him water. So when he's in that very moment, he was giving him the water. This one who was wounded, he heard another one who was asking for water and he was badly wounded. So he said, give him the water. He needs it more than I do. You see how Iman in the heart and you see that bond. They cared for one another. They were concerned about one another. So he went to the second one and he wanted to give him water. He heard the third one asking for water. And that one was really badly wounded. So he said, this man needs water more than I do. Give it to him. I don't want it. He went to the third one. Once he came to him, he found that he had already died. So he went back to the second one. He had already died. He went to the first one. He had already died.